you should praise young people. What you have is powerful in your lips tonight. What you pour out is powerful. You may think it's just a song. You may think it's just a simple hallelujah, but it is powerful tonight. And if you don't know what to say tonight, just say hallelujah. Because it's the highest praise. Sometimes we don't know what to say to such a holy God, but if you just say hallelujah.
you're not leaving the same way that God's taking that heaviness and he's replacing it and as you lift your hands the higher you lift your hands the less of the weight that you will feel I'm here to tell you that there is a purpose why you came tonight even though you came in the midst of the heaviness God's replacing it right now but the only way that that can happen is if you sing king of glory if you lift your voice, if you praise the King of kings and the Lord of lords. So tonight as we sing King of glory, oh, we sing it with everything that we have. But right there, I want you to begin to pray. I want you to begin to worship. And I want you to begin to cultivate your own worship and prayer atmosphere right now. Lift your voice here tonight. We're not in a rush. We're not, we're not worried about what we need to do next. Just take a moment and just talk to the Lord here tonight. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. We welcome you into this place, oh God. We worship you, God. We worship you. Tonight, this is what I would like to do. Is I would like to ask that. Well, first, I would like to ask Danelle and Stephanie to join me on stage. <clears throat> and as they make their way here tonight, 
is I'm going to ask that if you're a tier leader or a house fire leader, if you would just come to the front. And if we can make room for them this evening, if you're a tier leader or a house fire leader, if you can make your way up to the front. And those of you that are on stage, you can come down. Abel's going to stay. And you guys could stay at the, at the altar still. I'm going to need your help in a minute. But this morning, we had prayer here at 5 a.m. as a church. And the Lord prompted this on my heart. And he simply told me to remind you that he sees you. He sees your late nights and early mornings. He sees your finances that you give. He sees your time. He sees your sacrifice. And in Galatians 6, 9, it says, Let us not grow weary, for in due season we will reap a harvest. But in Proverbs, it says, those that are generous generous and refresh others shall also be refreshed. And I know that sometimes we can get caught up in the busyness of work. We can get caught up in the busyness of task. And I don't know if those of you that are here tonight, if you realize the, the work and the energy and the commitment and dedication it takes to have a consistent house fire, to have a consistent gang night. I think sometimes we could take it for granted. But God told me to tell you tonight that he sees you, that he sees the hard work. But in the midst of the busyness, in the midst of the hard work, in the midst of the sacrifice, He's not called for you to shrink back, but he's called for you to push further. And so tonight, what I want to do is I want to take a moment to pray for the leaders of this gang ministry. Because I don't know if you realize it, but the prayers of every single one of you is what keeps them going. The commitment to pray for your leader is what pushes them through. And so tonight what we're going to do is is the three of us, is we're going to lay hands on them tonight. But right there we are, I want you to stretch your hands towards them. And I want you to pray boldly over their lives. That God would begin to refresh them. That God would begin to take them to new levels. That God would begin to give them greater faith. That God would begin to open up their eyes to things that they could not see in the natural. And so all over this place, I want you to stretch your hands. And I want you to begin to pray for them tonight. As we lay hands on them tonight, I want you to pray for them. I want you to begin to to speak life over them. I want you to begin to speak breakthrough over them. Come on, you got to lift your voice. They fight for you every single day. And so you got to fight for them tonight. you got to war for them. You got a war for their breakthrough. You got a war for the fresh anointing. You got a war for fresh vision, fresh foresight. So come on, all over this place, I want you to stretch your arms. And I want you to begin to pray for them. Let your glory come and fill this place. Glory come and overtake. Let your glory come and fill this place. Up. Let your glory come and fill this place. Glory come and overtake. Glory come and fill this place. Up.
That's it. Come on, continue to pray for them tonight. begin to speak in that heavenly language right now. Come on, those of you who have been baptized in the Holy Spirit, those of you who know how to operate in the Holy Ghost, just begin to lift up that heavenly tongue right now. That language that's just between you and the Lord. And watch what begins to happen. Watch what begins to take place. Because there's sometimes that we don't know what to pray for. There's times where our prayers get repetitive. Our prayers get redundant. Our prayers run dry. But when the Holy Spirit shows up and he begins to move through you, he begins to flow through you, he begins to pray through you, something begins to shift. So right now, lift up your voice and tell Come on, that's it. Lift it up. Just a little bit longer tonight. He's doing a work. He's doing a work. He's working. 
Lift your hands here tonight. Lord, I surrender. I want to be changed. My heart's open wide. I call on your name. Don't let me leave this all to the same. Come on, lift your hands here tonight. All over this place, lift your hands, lift your hands, lift your hands. God's doing something tonight. God's doing something in your leader tonight. God's stirring up a fresh passion, fresh vision. Come on, lift your hands. Every week they come and they set an atmosphere for you to get your breakthrough. But tonight's their night. This moment's their moment. Lift your hands and just continue to let the presence of God move tonight. presence that is here. God, we thank you for what you've already done. God, we thank you for the stirring of our hearts as leaders, God. The time of refreshing, God. And Lord, tonight we pray, God, that as you continue to have your way tonight, God, I pray that our hearts would be open and ready to receive the word that you have for us, God. Lord, let us not leave this place the same. Let us not leave the way we came in. But have your way here tonight. Lord, we love you. We thank you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand here tonight. How many of you love your leaders tonight? Amen. Oh, that was weak. I said, how many of you guys love your leaders here tonight? Those of you that didn't scream, they're not going to take you to Paisa's after. <laughs> Just kidding. Well, listen, tonight we want to welcome you guys out to God's Anointed Now Generation. Is it gang in the house? And listen, this is what I want to do. Is they're going to play some upbeat music. I want you to get out of your seat for just a moment. Shake someone's hand. Tell someone what's up. Tell them you love them. If you're not scared, give them a hug. Give them a high five here tonight. Go for it, DJ. Uh, we have a couple announcements. My name is Brother Isaac. 
and we'd like to just let you know that we have house fires coming up this Tuesday. Come on now, if you're part of a house fire, let me hear you. Amen, amen, amen. That's right. All right. I'm, um, I'm one of the leaders of Undefeated, so if you want to come to mine and be undefeated because you know you're more than a conqueror, you're more than welcome. Come on, somebody. Um, if not, if not, uh, you could also see one of the other leaders as well, and that's Tuesday, and we'll be starting at seven locations. Uh, they'll, they'll be further explained later. And also, too, Sunday morning service. How many of us are ready to come to the house of the Lord yes. Sunday morning? Make some noise if you on, love Sunday you. mornings. I know our Sunday mornings are so packed out. But right now, he was just talking about house fires. But I want to hear you guys rep your house fire. If you're from New Gen Student Ministries House Fire, I want to hear you make, make some noise. That's right. That's right. If YA House Fire is in the house, make some noise. I see you guys, I see you guys, but I also have an announcement for all of the newcomers. Maybe it's your first time, maybe it's your second time here at this gang night. We have something special just for you. To turn to your neighbor and say, just for you. So if you're new, if, if, if it's your first time, if you don't really know people, you just come in and you take a seat, but you don't really know people, we want you to go head over to the Connect booth. It's right here on my left side. And right after service, we're going to be having a little connect booth. We have some drinks. We got some water. We got some chips if you like chips. And we want you all to go connect over there, meet some friends, get connected to a house fire, and just let's have some fun. Let's become family. You're not a guest no more, but we want to become family with you. So with that, that's all the announcements we have for you today. And thank you. Give it up for them, guys. <laughs> so um, tonight we have, Stephanie and I have the privilege to do tonight's offering. And um, all right, we need some more people to rise up and learn sound. Um, we have the privilege to do... <laughs> We have the privilege to do offering, and when I think of offering, right, a lot of you guys think about money, right, it's time to give, pull out your, your card, pull out your finances, but I couldn't help but think about the kid with the five loaves and the two fish. You know that story? Um, I, I know that story, and it's, what's crazy about that story is that we're, it's, um, it, we're in a setting just like this, is that we're in that story, you know, everyone came to see Jesus, you know. They came and Jesus wanted to feed them. And tonight, as what's it called? As you no, know, they as we all came to experience Jesus, it's like we're in the same atmosphere, you know. Um, all right, so you know, Jesus wanted to feed the crowd, and he's like, We gotta feed the crowd. And they were asking, How are we gonna feed the crowd? We should just send them home. But there was this young boy. And this young boy had five loaves of bread and two fishes. And what do we have here tonight? Tonight we have five bags of Takis and two Arizonas, you know. And I'm pretty sure you guys are looking at this and you guys are probably like, oh, dude, I could probably eat this all in one sitting, you know. It doesn't, this barely can do a dang. I could eat this and still be, not even be full, you know. But, you know, as that, who, with this, we just want to see, like, with what we have, you can, it, it may look small to us, but it's big in God's hands, you know. And with those five loaves and those two fish, Jesus fed everyone. And not only did he feed everyone, but there was enough left over after. He collected the baskets, and there was still stuff left over. Imagine we passed this around, and there is still stuff left over. Because when you have something, and you give it to God, God multiplies it. God yeah. does more than what you could do with your own. Yeah. And so then, with that, you know... What I just want to encourage you guys tonight, uh, with whatever you guys have, you know, if uh, we could all just stand up, you know, uh, what, 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 with whatever you have tonight, it doesn't have to be big, you know, it could be $10, $5, or even for some of you barely even have a dollar, or two pennies, it doesn't matter, there's always that the story with the woman with the two mics, you know, but with whatever you have tonight, 
you know, I just want to encourage you. It doesn't, just because it may seem small to you, doesn't mean that it's small to God. You know, God could always use it and multiply it and continue to, 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 to bless it, you know. So, if the ushers can prepare, um, pass the envelopes, I think, I think tonight we have what? A couple ways to give. A couple ways to give. And oh, Max, why don't you share with them too how God blessed you? You had a faithful car. I think we both had car miracles, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. We, we had our faithful little cars and we, we were faithful our with our hoopsies running over 300,000 miles. And we were just faithful, you yeah. know, like, God, you're going to bless me. God, you're going to bless me. And I know I got a blessing. Yeah. And what and about you? So, so did I. Like, just recently, uh, last month, you know, I I got a new car. But before that, I had I had a, a 96 Nissan Sentra. Dude, that thing was beat. It was, man, I was pushing that. I had stories with that car. Some of you guys know what happened this one time. But, you know, uh, <laughs> but that car was faithful. And the thing is, I... With what I had, you know, I did what I could to, to, to make sure that I kept it in a good condition, you know, make sure that it was always running. I always did what I can, you know, and with that, God was able to bless me with a new car. I got, now I have a 2016, a, a car that's... 20-year upgrade? Yeah, 20-year oh upgrade, God. like, you know, and, and, and with that, you know, just being faithful with what you have, you know, just giving the, the, the small, you know, God can still... Bless it. So tonight, um, if you guys have your offering, we would just like to pray for it. So we could all just bow our heads and close our eyes. Uh, we'll, we'll get started. Uh, so Father God, we come before you, God, tonight, God. Thanking you, God, for this privilege and this opportunity, God, to, to give to you, God, what may seem small to us, but know that it's big in your hands, God. We pray, God, that you, God, will continue, God, to just bless it, God, that you will uh, allow this... God, this, this, this offering, God, multiply, God, and continue, God, to grow, God. We know that as we, as we give to you tonight, God, it's not something that we just do out of routine, but, God, it's something we do out of, out of a worship, God. It's something we do because we know the God that you are, God. And we, we pray tonight over this offering, God, over their people, God, and that you will continue, God, to just pour out a blessing in their life, God. We thank you and love you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we all say amen and amen. You, you can, can come on up. Up. And if you came on up, we're going to give you some tips. Here we yeah. go. You're faithful, man. Who wants God's it? going to bless you. Right here, my brother. I'm going to bless my brother right here. God is faithful when you give to him. He gives back. Yeah, the little girl came up. Thank you for being faithful. <laughs> <laughs> thank yeah. you for being faithful. Up for our worship team. We can call up the worship team tonight. Come on, why don't we all stand to our feet tonight? Echo. Come on, how many came expecting tonight? Come on, I said, how many came expecting tonight? Come on, right now, let's just begin to prepare our hearts. Let's just begin to, to worship Him. Let's open up our hearts. I, I believe that. The Lord has a word for each and every single one of us tonight. But right now, we just want to zero in a little bit more time and begin to open up our hearts and focus in on the Lord right now. Oh, come on, just tell him, God, I need you. Tell him, Lord, I need you tonight. Come on, just begin to lift up your voice. Come on, shake off all the worries of the week. Begin to just empty your mind of every distraction. Oh, we put our attention on you, Jesus. We worship you. Oh. It's all I want. 
tonight. Everyone lift your hands. See your presence tonight. Your presence is all I need. All that I your glory, your glory. Is it's all. all. Just begin to talk to him for these next few moments. We give you everything. All the love that we have to bring. We pour it out. We pour it out. Like a precious perfume upon your
lift your hands right there. If you came with an expectancy tonight, if you came with a burden on your heart tonight, if you came with a need tonight, I'm going to need you to lift your hands for the next few moments. I just want to sing that, 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 that one break right there where you say, I'm giving you everything. I'm giving you everything. Because if that's exactly what we're going to speak about here tonight. And that's exactly what the Lord put on my heart to share with us tonight. About giving everything of ourself over to Him. About giving our will over to Him. About giving our pain over to Him. About giving all of our turmoil, all of our stress, everything that is upon our bodies over unto Him. So as we sing that one more time, I just want you to prepare your hearts and tell them, Jesus, I'm giving you everything. Jesus, I'm giving you everything. There's nothing I withhold back. I'm giving you everything tonight. We're so grateful. We're so grateful. We come tonight as a grateful people that you would let individuals like us, that you would let someone like myself be able to enter into your presence where you're able to outpour your peace, outpour your love, outpour your calling, outpour your breakthrough. And all you ask from us tonight is to have an open heart. Heavenly Father, move in a powerful way here tonight, my God. Change and transform the lives of Victory Outreach San Diego gang. Move in a, just a beautiful way, my God. Move in a beautiful way, my God. Remove me, Father God, and let me be the PA system of heaven tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, Victory Outreach San Diego gang says... Amen and amen, amen. All right, all right. That was cool for like my prayer, but I need you to give a shout for your King of Kings, for the Lord of Lords, for the one that saved you, for the one that delivered you, for the one. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, worship team. You guys are powerful. We're full. I mean, how many of you guys are thankful that we have an anointed worship team? Amen. That could take us there. That could take us into the presence like, man, it's, it's heavy. It's a heavy, beautiful presence. Even like last week, our worship team has been killing it. Uh, first, I just want to say thank you to Mill. Appreciate you. Love you. Just like I said the other day, you know, love you again. <laughs> love you. And uh, just, uh, um, Really thankful for the opportunity to share. And I thank you for believing in me. Amen. Um, you guys can all have your seats. <clears throat> Appreciate you. Thank you, Keys. Amen. And tonight, I want to be speaking about something, you know, that is very, very, very important. If you call yourself a Christian, if you call yourself a follower of God, I have a question for us tonight. How many of us want to be a vessel that God can use? Okay, okay, okay. So, look, this is what we're going to do. I need, I need crowd participation. Okay? Crowd participation does, does, does a few things. I'm not the best speaker, but it makes me preach a little better with crowd participation. Okay? All right. So, with crowd participation, I'm also faster. All right? So, I know you all got plans after. So, if you all want to get to them plans, I need some participation from you all. Amen. But I know the Holy Spirit has a plan for each and every single one of you tonight. How many of you guys are ready for that? Yeah. Amen. So just like that question I had tonight, how many of us want to be a vessel that God can use? Yeah. So I, have, I, I propose to you this. And I'm being in all honesty. In all honesty, I propose to you this. We're going to stand for the reading of our word. But I only want you to stand if you want to be used by God. So I only want you to stand if you want to be used by God. Don't stand. Honestly, I'm, I'm being dead serious. It's something heavy when this is what you ask for. Amen. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. 
Amen. Let's go ahead and turn to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20. Let me get an amen when you're there. Amen. amen. Now, the word of God reads like this. Now, in a large house, someone say a large house, there are not only gold and silver vessels, but also those of wood and clay, some for honorable use and some for dishonorable use. Verse 21 says this. So if anyone purifies himself from anything dishonorable, he will be a special instrument set apart, useful to the master, prepared for every good work. Amen. Are you guys ready for tonight? I want you to look over to your neighbor before you're seated and tell him, me too. Me too. You can have your seat tonight. See, God is looking tonight. I believe that heaven is open and God is looking down on each and every single one of us tonight for vessels that he could use. For vessels that he can use. So God is putting the privilege before each and every single one of us. The privilege to be called a disciple of Christ. The privilege to be called a Christian. The privilege to operate in miracles and healings. It's a privilege. How many can you agree? It's a privilege to operate in this type of, uh, as a vessel for Christ. But you see, I have a question. How many of us, I got a lot of questions tonight, so just make sure you're going to be answering me. How many of us want to be an agent of change for our families? God wants to use you, high schooler, new Jenner, to make an impact right there in your schools. I know schools are opening up, so there's no more excuses. Oh, well, I'm just on Zoom. No, no, no. Your school's opening back up, so you can start making that difference once again. And for our young adults here tonight, God wants you to use you to bring forth salvation to your coworkers, right? Right there at your job. He wants you to be that light in the midst of darkness. See, when we look at our opening text here, the Bible says this house, right? This house. That part of that portion of the scripture means the church, right? And it says in a, in a large house, right? How many of you guys agree that Victor Reed San Diego is a large house, right? We're a big church. We're a thriving church. We're a growing church. And also in that scripture, it talks about vessels. So the vessels is talking about you and I. The vessels are you and I. They're people. But in this house, there are some people that will be used for honorable. And then on the other end, there's some people that will be used for dishonorable. I don't know about you tonight, but I want to be used as an honorable vessel for Christ. Man, I have three quick points tonight. I, at least I think they're quick. I got three quick points tonight. Uh, in order to be used by God, we must be three things. In order to be used by God, we must be three things. We must be one, faith-filled. Two, we must be honorable. And three, we must be empty. Amen. So let's get into our first point tonight. We must be faith-filled. Right in the Bible, in uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, the Bible says, Now without faith, it is impossible to please God. Since the one who draws near to him must believe that he exists, that he rewards those who seek him. And in the 11th chapter of Hebrews, if we're looking at the whole chapter of Hebrews, we see a list of faith stories. We see a list of broken down. They're, they're, they're talking about Jacob. They're talking about Abraham. They're talking about Moses and Daniel. And you see all these stories. And if you want to look at chapter 11, I advise you to go look because it just tells you a whole bunch of faith stories. If your faith is ever weakening, pop open Hebrews 11 and I pray that you would be encouraged. See, if we look at this list in chapter 11, how many of you guys ever heard of the Hall of Fame? Right, the Hall of Fame, right? Well, this right here in Hebrews chapter 11, I heard it called the Hall of Faith. I heard it called the Hall of Faith. Because these men and women were individuals that have stepped out on their faith of, on God. How many of you guys want to be used in a mighty way tonight? I'm going to keep asking you guys that all throughout the night. 
How many want to be used in a mighty way tonight? See, the scripture says, now without faith, it is impossible to please God. Well, if we look at the scripture, well, what is faith? Faith defined in the Bible reads like this. It is the reality of what is hoped for. The proof of what is not seen. See, if we look at the word hope, we define hope. We see a feeling of expectation for a certain thing to happen. Hope is a feeling with an expectation for a certain thing to come forth or to take place. Amen. And right now, I'm going to need two people to help me. It don't matter who you are. I need two people. Don't be shy. I just need two people. Whoever it is. Yeah, just come up here. Yeah, just come up. Boom, right there. Boom. All right. Okay, perfect. All right, yeah, come up on stage. All right, I need two people. All right, all right, all right. All right, Micah. See you? What kind of shoes are those, bro? They Uggs? They ugly. No, I just, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm all bagging on him. He's coming over here to help me. Oh, it's messed up. Amen. Praise God. Okay. So what I want to do, maybe we'll move to the side. Maybe we'll move to the side right here. Okay. So, sister, I want you to come right here. I want you to face that way. Cool. Right there. All right. Hold on. Let's turn a little bit. There you go. Hands out. Hands out. There you go. I want you to come right here. A little closer. Don't be scared. All right. Perfect. Okay. So, look. This is what I want you to do tonight. This is what I want you to do tonight, okay? I want you, without hesitation, when I say go, I want you to fall back, okay? Without hesitation, okay? Without hesitation, okay? Without hesitation, okay? Okay, so I want to tell something, though. What do you hope he does? What do you hope he does? Catches me so I don't hit the floor. <laughs> So you hope he catches you, right? You hope he catches you. Okay, that's fair enough. I think everybody would hope that, right? All right, ready? On the count of three, I want you to fall. Like, have you been working out, bro? Are you going to catch her? Bro, I know you've been on quarantine just chilling in your room playing video games, bro. Have you been working out? You're going to catch my sister. Okay, he's going to catch her. How many of you guys believe he's going to catch her? All right, Ready? On the count of three, I need you to fall back without hesitation. Ready? Help me out. Help me out, everybody. One, two, three. Oh, that was weak. That was weak. That was weak. That was weak. She, like, she like was not even, like, falling yet, and he caught her. She was, like, right here. She, would, she could have stood up. All right. I need you to really catch her, bro. Like, imagine she got slayed by the spirit right now. All right? Like, you didn't even know. Like, you were unaware, and boom, you got to catch her. Okay? All right, ready. Ready, ready, ready? Everybody help me out. One, two, three. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Let's give him a hand. Let's give him a hand. Let's give him a hand. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. So we see in the illustration, right? We see in the illustration, I asked her a specific question. I said, what do you hope he does? What do you hope he does? She said, I hope he catches me. I hope he catches me. See, I have a question tonight. I, have a, I told you I have a bunch of questions. How many of us have ever felt like you've had a trustful experience with God? How many of you have ever felt like you put your arms out and you just flew back and said, God, I pray that you are behind me. By the waving of those hands, I need to see how many of y'all had a trust fall experience. See, I believe that the individuals in chapter 11 that we've been speaking about, there were individuals that had the trust fall experience with God. Right? But not, not only did they have a trust fall experience, they put some action behind their experience. They put that action behind their experience. Because the genuine actings of faith will bear to be reported. What do I mean by that? 
that when someone steps out by faith, people want to hear about it. When someone does something by faith, man, it gets people's ears, it gets people's attention. And when the acts of faith are reported, for a true believer, they should make your, your, your soul jump inside. For a true believer, when you see an act of faith reported unto you, it should make you leap inside. Because we know that we serve the same God that is in chapter 11. And if God was able to do it for them, then he can do it for us. If God was able to pull them out of slavery, then God will be able to pull us out of our sin. If God was able to raise up a man with a speech impediment to save his generation, he could raise up some third wave generation to save them. If God was able to provide a ram. If God was able to provide a ram in the thicket. And God is sure enough to provide for all of our needs. I love this one. If God was able to shut the mouth of a lion. If God was able to shut the mouth of a lion, then God will be able to shut the mouth of your enemies. God will be able to shut the mouth of your haters. God will be able to shut the mouth of the lies and the tormentation of the enemy. Because when we step out on God... When you step out on God, you can be sure that he is to foot the bill every time. You know, I say this, uh, what was it, Jan end of January, I came over here. I moved from the city. I only known one city my entire life. And at the end of January, I moved, I moved over here. And I say that, man, I don't feel like I took a step. Of faith I don't feel like I took a step of faith you know I had so I, I had you know in, a, in like a humble way I had, I had I had things going for me you know I wasn't jacked up I wasn't on the streets I wasn't you know doing the things that I once was doing a few years ago but I believe that I didn't walk over here I didn't just take a step of faith but I genuinely believe I jumped off a huge cliff I jumped off a huge cliff. I jumped off a huge cliff. I'm only 25. I left my family. I left everything that I've known. But I know that God has called me to do something great for my generation. So I jumped on the promise. I didn't take a step. I jumped on the promise that God has called me to reach and teach and to lead my generation. To be an example for my generation. And I said, you know what, God? If you have called me, I don't care what people are saying. Because I know that 99.9% .9 of people did not agree with my decision to come over here. But I said, God, you have called me. You have chosen me. You are leading me so I'm gonna jump out by faith I don't care what anyone says I'm gonna do what you have called me to do jumping out by faith jumping out by faith and I didn't come over here with all this money in my bank account but I want to let you know something is this I have never gotten more Pentecostals. I have never gotten more random uh, cash apps. I've never gotten more random Zelle payments than I've than ever before. When I came over here, people were encouraged. Just like I said, something leaped inside of people's spirit and they were encouraged by a young man that took a step of faith that didn't just take a step but took a leap of faith because they knew the security that I left and I was stepping out on God. I'm yelling up here. Amen. So I say this. Thank you, Jesus. So, in order to be used by God, first we got to have the faith that He can use us. You got to have the faith that God can use you. The faith that God could take the mess that you have made and turn it into a beautiful message. That he can take your mistakes, your, 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 your own muck and mire, and have it woven into a beautiful essence. See, in order to fill 
the strength of your anchor, you got to go through some storms. How many of you guys know the strength of your anchor here tonight? So not only, in order to be used by God, not only do we have to have the faith, but secondly, we must be an honorable vessel. See, in our opening text, the Bible says there are two types of vessels, right? Two types of vessels. Some for honor and some for dishonor. Honorable vessels are vessels of gold and silver. Dishonorable vessels are those of wood and clay. But what's the difference? Obviously, besides their chemical properties. What's the difference? I believe that they are different because when you put some fire to the wood, when you put some heat under that wood, it begins to crumble and it burns and it goes to ashes, and it's never to be seen ever again. And when you put some pressure on that clay vessel, put some pressure on a clay vessel, you're going to see that thing crack. You're going to see it doesn't have the integrity. You're going to see it fold right underneath that pressure. But what about the honorable vessels? What about the gold? What about the gold? See, when we put heat to the vessel of gold, it don't burn up, but it's actually in a state that is moldable. What about when we apply some pressure to the gold vessel? I looked it up. I looked it up. I don't know if Google's telling me wrong, but I looked it up. And it said that the gold won't crack, but it'll just bend. It'll just go with it. And it'll just move with it. <laughs> it won't crack. It won't bend. See, I believe God is saying here tonight, I need some individuals. I believe God is saying here tonight, I need some third waivers that aren't going to turn into some ashes when the heat gets turned up on you. I need some third waivers who aren't going to crack under the pressures of life, who aren't going to crack under the pressures of ministry, who aren't going to crack under the pressure of the calling. But I believe, I truly believe that God is raising up an army of uh, Victory Outreach San Diego gang of some individuals, of some third wave warriors that aren't going to crack, that aren't going to just turn into ashes when the heat gets turned up, but are going to be able to go after the calling and be able to be an honorable vessel for God to use. <clears throat> and in order to be that honorable vessel that we desire to be, I want to let you know something. In order to be an honor vessel in the eyes of Christ, we must be empty. Turn to your neighbor and tell him we must be empty. See, tonight we talked about how to be used by God. First, you got to be faith-filled. Two, you got to be honorable. And three, we must be empty vessels. See, I believe here tonight, this is for a lot of leaders here tonight, this point right here. I believe here tonight that some vessels, we got the faith. Faith ain't no problem. We got the faith down. And we're honorable vessels. We live right, do what we're supposed to do. You know, we're obedient, chasing after God. But I dare to say at times that we aren't those empty vessels that God has called us to be. I dare to say at times we're filled with our own stuff. And in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 21, the Bible says, So if anyone purifies himself from anything dishonorable, he will be a special instrument, set apart, useful to the master, prepared for every good work. 
See, the word purifies means to clean out, to clean thoroughly, to purge or cleanse. To purge or cleanse. I want to let you know something tonight, though. There is a huge word that sticks out in bold letters in this scripture. Huge word. I believe it's probably the smallest word. That word is two letters. And that word is if. If anyone purifies themselves, he will be a special instrument. If you purify yourself, you'll be set apart. If you purify yourself, you'll be useful to the master. If you purify yourself, you'll be prepared, you will be prepared for every good work. If, if, there's a huge if in that scripture. But I believe that there is a yearning in this place. I believe that there's a yearning in this place and a desire to be used by God. Because what I did at the beginning was intentional. I said, stand up if you want to be used by God. And I probably saw like three people and they're still in their seats. So it seems to me that everybody in this sanctuary wants to be used by God. I want you to understand that when you empty yourself, when you empty yourself, you purge yourself of the things that you, you once were, that those things are gone. They're gone. Because he who the sun sets free is free indeed. I want to let you know that you are a new creation in Christ Jesus. That you don't live in condemnation any longer. But you're able to walk with your head held high. Knowing that your sins were bought and washed clean on the cross in Calvary. See, but the Lord is calling you tonight. To be an empty honorable vessel an empty honorable vessel as we all stand here tonight I want to share a personal story <clears throat> about my journey of emptying myself and in, in no way am I saying that, you know, I, I made it, I'm fully emptied of myself. I'm not saying that. I'm still on the journey. So I want you guys to fully understand that. I remember my senior year, I thought I was, man, I thought I was a big shot. I thought I was a big shot. You know what I'm saying? I did, you know, I was the typical, stereotypical, like, big shot guy, you know? He's captain of the football team, you know. I was, uh, you know how, like, your schools have, like, the, whatever your uh, your mascot is? You know, that's, like, uh, like, what was your mascot? Hornet. It would be, like, um, Hornet, Hornet of the Year, right? The Hornet of the Year, right? Okay, so that was, like, that was me, right? I was, like, the condor. Like, I was called Mr. Condor, literally. <laughs> People call me Mr. Condor. Yeah, so, I know, right? Right? <laughs> I just kidding. I just kidding. I, just kidding. <laughs> hey, I gotta empty myself. I'm still on the journey. Right? So I say all that to say. I just say all that to say. That I was I thought it was like a big shot, right? And you know those those double doors that you gotta open in order to get into the sanctuary? In order for me to step into a room, double doors had to be open because my head was so big. Can I can I can I be real transparent here tonight? Can I be transparent here tonight? I walked in with a big old head every day. Surprised there was a helmet to fit it. Puffed up with my own self, puffed up on my own, my own things that I be doing. Everything that I did was for me. Everything I did was to push me along, to get me better, to get me another step. I found myself right here, senior year. I just signed, um, I just signed my, my life away to a school. I'm no, just kidding. I signed my national letter of intent. I, I got a football scholarship, right? So I'm over there. Fast, fast forward, uh, week six, 
right? Week six, we're playing, and I'm playing. I'm right there, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And I'm going. And in a moment's notice, all of a sudden, I'm on the floor. I opened my eyes, and I was like, whoa. And then I said, whoa, what's that? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And I had a sharp shooting pain in my back. And I had a, like, a, it was like a, such a weird pain in my knee. And I was like, oh, my God. I, I, oh, my God. So then some of my teammates, they helped me up, right? And I remember driving to the hospital. And immediately already, I was already, I was, had like an anger almost inside of me burning for God because I said, man, God, I did all this stuff, came all this way just for this to happen. Just for this to happen. All I ever wanted was to do this and you're taking it from me? Because I knew I was never going to be the same. I go to the doctors. Doctors come back. They tell me, hey, son, I'm um, sorry to tell you. But your disc and your L4 is popped out and you tore your knee. In one play like that, it was gone. And I remember I was, I was, I was right there. I was crying. I wasn't crying because of the pain. I was crying because I felt like everything I worked so hard for was taken away from me. I come home. I'm super mad at God. I'm hot. I'm, I'm, I'm super hot right now. I'm, 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 I'm so mad. And I find myself in a state of depression. And I find myself doing some, some dumb stuff. I find myself at a party. Right? I find myself at a party back in my city. And I'm there, and I felt the presence of God hit my life like never before. And, God, and I literally remember in the middle of a party, I remember sitting down on the floor, and I was weeping tears, and God told me, you know you're not supposed to be here. You're supposed to be helping them. And I was weeping and I was weeping and I got up and I gave my life to the Lord. I went to a gang night because I was a church kid. And you know how it is when you go to the altar on a Sunday morning, your parents get all weird. Right, so I had to wait till a gang night. Right, so that was me though. That was me. And I can honestly say that everything that I once did was for me. But when God got a hold of my life, when God got a hold of my life, and I began this journey of emptying myself to be a vessel that He could use, I seen God use my life like I never would have imagined. I've seen God use me to lay hands on my grandmother and she went to the hospital and the doctor told her, Lucille, I don't know what happened, but your tumor is gone. I've seen God use me to preach in front of high schoolers all over the world and to spread forth the gospel. I've seen God use me. I've seen God use me. The youngest in my family but I was the one that helped keep my family together. And I say none of this. God knows my heart. I say none of this to give glory to me. But all the honor and the glory to him to let you know that when you empty yourself of you, when you turn away from your wicked ways, then you say, God, I don't want nothing of my calling. I don't want nothing of what I desire. But I want what you want for me. I want what you have for me. I want the life that you have for me. God will be able to use you like you never imagined. Like you never imagined. And tonight is as, 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 as we begin to minister on the keys, I want everybody just to close your eyes. God wants to do something great tonight. Just close your eyes. Just close your eyes. I don't want nobody looking around. Not, out of, not, not because I'm saying it, but out of reverence for God. And if you're here tonight, and you say, man, Zay, I need my faith touched. I need my faith touched. I don't, I can't, I don't know if I can make it another day. I need my faith touched. I just want you to slip your hand up real quickly, real briefly. 
Say, God, I need my faith touched. Praise God. Or if you're here today, you have a desire to be used by God. And you desire to be an honorable vessel. I want you to slip your hand up real quick. You desire to be an honorable vessel. And if you're here tonight saying, God, I want to empty me of me. God, I don't want what I want any longer. God, empty me of me so you can move through me and I can go after everything that you have called me to do. Just slip your hand up real quick. Say, God, empty me of me. And as we begin to play, as we begin to sing, if you lifted up your hands tonight, I just want you to make your way to the altar. If you lifted up your hands tonight, make your way to the altar here tonight. God wants to do something special. God wants to do something special. He wants to purify some vessels. He wants to empty some vessels. He wants to touch your faith. He wants to move mountains in your life. He wants to move upon you tonight. Make your way. Make your way. Make your way. Make your way tonight.
Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, there's such a beautiful presence here tonight. A beautiful presence here tonight. Dare we San Diego gang? No matter where you're at tonight, no matter if you came up here because you said, Man, I need my faith touched. If you said, I, I want to be that honorable vessel, or if I want to be emptied. Right now, I just really quickly I want to pray for the ones that say, Man, I, I, I need my faith touched, I need my faith filled. And the individuals that say that I want to be honorable. <clears throat> I want to be honorable. Lift up your hands really quick. If you say, I want to be faithful, I want to be filled with faith, and I want to be that honorable vessel. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I open my heart to you. I know that you're the same God as yesterday, today, and forevermore. And that you could touch me right where I'm at. You could move upon my situation. You could bring healing and miracles in my life. I open my heart to you. Touch my faith. Touch the cord in my heart of my faith. Jesus, I want to be used by you. I want to be an honorable vessel. I want to be an honorable vessel. Heavenly Father, touch your people tonight, Father God. Let their faith be touched, Father God. Move upon their hearts, their minds, and their spirits, my God. I pray right now, Lord Jesus, that you would fill faith, my God. You would fill faith tanks, Father God. That you would return, Father God, your people, my God. You would bring restoration to your people, my God. I pray right now, Father God, that your spirit would move, my God, at these altars in this sanctuary, my God. That you, my Heavenly Father, would declare, my God, oh Lord Jesus, restoration, my God, healing upon their lives miracles upon their lives my God that you my heavenly father would touch them right there where they're at my God oh fill them my God fill them my God fill them my God fill them my God move in a powerful way my God oh Lord Jesus let them never forget my God this touch from you tonight my God in the name of Jesus Holy, will be beautiful, will be 
Come on, let's lift your hands here tonight. that word here tonight. Come on, I say, how many of you received that word here tonight? There's one thing about us is that we're big on putting action to our words. And so tonight, this is what I want to do is I'm going to ask Ohani and Selma if they can go to the connection zone for me and get a pen and a paper. And tonight, if you came up, you say, I want to use by God. I want to do something great for God. Then we want to get you plugged in. And you say, well, I go to House Fire already. But just going to House Fire is not enough. There's so many areas that you can be a part of and you can get connected in. And it starts in the small things. And so tonight, we want to get you connected. Right when I dismiss, we want to get you connected. And so tonight, if you came up here and you said, I want to do something great for God. I want to do something great for God. I want him to use my life. And right after, I want you to go right over here, and I want you to see Selma and Ohani. They're going to get your name, your number, an area that you're interested in being a part of, because there's a place for you here. There's a place for you to be a part. And so we want you to put action to what you said tonight. We don't want it to be an emotional thing. We don't want it to be because you felt goosebumps during the message or because he screamed at you, right? We want it to be because you genuinely say, I want to do something great for God. Amen. Tonight, right there, we got to close your eyes, bow your heads. Lord, we come before you tonight, God, and we thank you, God, for what you've done here tonight. We thank you for the word that has gone forth. And Lord, we ask, God, that you would seal this word within our hearts, God, but not just seal it in our hearts, God, but use it to push us to put action to our commitment. Use it to push us to put action to what we said we would do, Lord. And God, tonight, let it start now. Let it start in this moment. Let us do what you've called us to do. Lord, we love you. We thank you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand here tonight. And so listen, tonight, if you came forward and you're serious about being used by God, we want you guys to join them right over here, right when I dismiss. But don't forget, Sunday morning, we'll be right back here at 9 and 11 a.m. You don't want to miss out. Stick around, fellowship, hang out. But don't forget to come see them over here in the corner to get connected.